18. Uh, we got Paul Ragsdale, Chuck Davidson. Lyle Stokes seems to be missing in action, but he might pop in here shortly. Myself, Chris, Fudd Wallace. And tonight for our special guest, we have Ryan Casey of Show Me Guide Service. So uh, first off, before we get started a little bit, I'm going to touch base with everybody on here. Um, last week we did a character, uh, Runny Doo-Doo, I did the character. Um, there were some people who thought uh, Runny Doo-Doo might have been being portrayed to mock any certain, a certain individual, be it Bink or be it somebody else or or whatnot, and really, Ronnie, Ronnie the character really was just a, he's a character actually that I made up way over a year ago, um, someone we'll have on, we'll, we'll have on the show again, uh, it's really just that we're going to have different characters on the show, we're going to do things that are going to be to uh, just just be enjoyable and be different, and, and you know, we're not trying to offend anybody, so uh, Bink wasn't offended, it wasn't, it wasn't aimed at him, which some people thought it might have been. Um, we're, we are going to have Bink and, and possibly Janet both together on again on a different show, um, so we look forward to that. And, and we're not, you know, we're also going to try to stay away from having characters like Ronnie and, and things like that when we have special guests, so that way we can focus on them a little bit more. Um, but beyond that, I mean, we're all good. We're gonna we're gonna keep doing our show the way we do it. We're gonna have fun doing it. We're gonna try to make it good for everybody else. So. Uh, we're going to get right into the meet with uh, Ryan Casey here. I'm going to go ahead and let Chuck start us off, if you'd like. Uh, how you doing today, Ryan? You been getting on them lately? Oh, I'm doing pretty good. Thanks for having me, guys. Uh, now it's been a little tough out here on the river uh, lately. Um, well, when you uh, when you bring your clients out on these guide trips, um, what do you focus on the most that they're going to take home with them? Uh, when you drop them off at the boat ramp that day, what you know? What do you want them to remember about it, and uh, what do you really try to uh, focus on while you have them in the boat? Uh, safety number one, because it is a pretty dangerous river. But uh, what I mean, I just want them to take away having fun, and you know, everybody's different. Uh, some people want to show up and they want to learn a, a certain technique, or or they want to learn to go out and, and, and do it themselves. Some people just want to go out and, and spend a day on the Mississippi River. Um, other people want to catch fish. You know, everybody wants to catch fish, but, you know, some people are just there, just there for the fishing. Some people are there to learn something. So, I mean, you know, you just kind of feel everybody out and, and, and try to come through for everybody on, on what they want. Well, that's great. Um... What what was what's been your most uh, memorable uh, guide trip that you've had clients in the boat that uh, you know something may have happened where you've really got a good limit of fish or you know something else that may have happened that you that just stands out in your mind that you will never forget. Uh, there's there's lots of those, but uh, there's good, there's bad and ugly. Um, but I'd say you know I'd, probably the one that stands out the most for me is. Um, we had some clients out, and my dad was first mating for me, and we uh, we caught 348 pounds of fish in our best spot, and uh, that was a that was a really good day. And our next best spot that day was like 154 pounds, so we had 10 fish that averaged a little better than 50 pounds apiece. That was a good day. Um, yeah, that was a real good day. So. Um, so uh, you um, and your tournament fishing, are you going to, you know, try to get back into it a little bit more than you have been, or uh, are you just going to focus on some big tournaments and, you know, not try to make, um, you know, every uh, tournament on certain trails and stuff like that? What's, what's your focus on the tournaments coming up? Um, really, tournament fishing is kind of over for me. Um, I had moved back to Cleveland. I, I had fun fishing it with him, and um, fishing the tournaments, but uh, any more, you know, being out there as much as I am, and you know the pressure of putting people on fish, um, you know, same thing with tournaments. You know, it's it's work. You got to get your bait. You got to, you know, find your fish. You, you don't really get to fish for them pre-fishing, um, and, and any more, I don't really get to fish much myself. So if I do get some time off, um, I usually go out there just to catching myself instead of worrying about, you know, finding them for a tournament uh, and, and, you know, putting myself into that pressure again. So I I don't really fish many tournaments anymore, um, 
but uh, I do, you know, the one thing I miss about it is going and seeing everybody and, and um, you know, the BS and it goes along with it. That's that's one thing I do I do miss. So I try to, you know, if there's a big local turn, I try to, you know, show up to talk to everybody. But uh, other than that, you know, I, I just I kind of got away from the tournament session. So you're not going to try to hit, like, the, the big monsters on the Ohio or something like that? You know, next couple. Man, that's that's a great tournament. Aaron Wheatley has done a fantastic job, and we've had a real good time every time we fished it. Um, it's just, yeah, I I really don't see myself fishing any any tournaments. I might fish one a year, um, and if I was going to fish one, that that's always one that uh, you want to go fish. But um, you know, I I don't know if I'll get to make that one this year. But it's it's always a great time and. Uh, if I don't make it this year, I'm gonna miss it. Uh, speaking of pressure, um, you know, t tell us what it's like when you're taking your clients out and you have all this pressure on you, where uh, you know they're expecting fish. Um, you know, maybe not big fish, but you know they're expecting to get fish in the boat. Um, what's that like, and what kind of pressure do you have on you, knowing you got to go out and you know and do that kind of work every day? Well, I mean, that's just it. You, you know, you've, you've got to produce, you know, every day. Um, you know, you, you're taking people's money and, and they're, they're paying you to, to put them on fish and, and have a good time and, um, and keep them safe. And it's, yeah, it's, there's pressure involved. I mean, it's just like fishing a tournament or anything else. You, you know, they, the fish, sometimes they don't want to cooperate and, uh, you got, you know, maybe three to five people sitting in the boat looking at you, uh, Going, what, what's going on? And you, you know, you got to come up with an answer. So it's, um, you know, it's it's tough sometimes. But it's, you know, a, being out on the in the on the water is, uh, you know, there's no substitute for it. You know, you, uh, you know, time on the water, you can, you can generally, you know, figure out, you know, where to go to put some fish in the boat. And uh, it's, you know, it, it it's not always easy. It's not, you know, everybody says it's the best job in the world. And uh, I'm definitely not complaining, but it's it's got to stay just like anything else. Uh, how how do you feel on those days when you when you take some clients out and and it's one of those bad cold front days and uh, you know and you just can't seem to get the skunk out of the boat or you find a banana in your boat at the end of the day? Does that you think that makes you a a a, a better fisherman by um, having days like that where you know you you've got to uh, try to get out and learn even more so you won't have days like that? Well, I mean, you know, uh, as far as skunkings go, they, they don't happen very often. Uh, but um, they've happened, they've already, I've, I think it's happened to me five times uh, in, in, in this is my fifth year, and it's happened twice this year already. I don't know what's going on in the river right now. Um, it's, it's really tough out there. But, um, you know, those days are going to happen. It's fishing. Um, you know, the one thing I got to ask myself is, did I, did I try as hard as I could today for these people? And, you know, um, did, you know, did I do anything for them, you know, to teach them about what we're doing? You know, what, what did I do for them today? Did I work, you know, my hardest? Did I make sure they had a good time? Um, it's still fishing. You know, it, it's, it's going to happen. Um, you know, it, it it might not happen, uh, you know, as much for some as others, but you know, it's 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 fishing. I mean, you can't you can't always make them bite, and uh, you know, most of the time, uh, you know, people are, you know, relatively new or, or new to fishing or catfishing, and they have a pretty big obstacle to get over with just the equipment itself. Um, you know, so you know, getting the fish to the boat is an issue sometimes. A lot of people, you know, have a tough time. They've never used circle hooks or you know, the way the fish bite, they want to jerk the hook. And, you know, we lose a lot of fish like that. But, um, you know, it's it's uh, it's challenging every day out there. But, uh, you know, it's, it, it is a lot of fun. I bet. Um, I, I've seen your uh, new boat and the new setup you've got in it. And, you know, uh, you've invested a lot of money on the equipment, your boat, and your company. Um when when you was focusing and, and deciding on what electronics to get and um, you, you was doing this to to make yourself a better uh, fisherman for your clients so you'd have the right stuff and 
you had every advantage to uh, do a good job every time you took them out. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, for me, uh, safety is, is priority. I mean, this is a dangerous river. Um, you know, people die out here every year. And, um, you know, that that's the, the priority number one. And, and the ProCat is a really stable boat. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's wide, it's, it's, it's 24 foot long, you know, it's got plenty of room for people to move around. And, uh, you know, that, that was, um, you know, one of the biggest things for me is, I, you know, if I'm going to be charging some, I want them to be comfortable and, and I want them to be safe, you know. So the equipment, you know, you use reflects on, on your, your, your work, you know. Um, you don't want people, you know, paying you a bunch of money to go out there and use, you know, equipment that's going to cost them fish. You know, I, I understand if, if a fish, you know, pulls the hook or gets you down in structure or something like that, but if I've got fish breaking my line or, um, my, my reels, you know, locking up or, you know, rods breaking for no reason, um, you know, that you can't have that stuff. You know, you, that's something you can't control. And so you spend the extra money and you get a good equipment and, and people, you know, I, I get a lot of compliments on the equipment I use and, and the boat I, I use, you know, and uh, I, I wouldn't have it any other way. Let me jump in here real quick, uh, Chuck, and get one of the, I, we've got about five questions lined up on chat, so I'm going to get one of them shot out to you real quick. Uh, Ryan, do you prefer night fishing or day fishing? And what are your personal best fish that you got? Uh, I prefer daytime fishing. Um, you know, I, I do some night fishing trips in the summertime, but um, we usually have no problem catching them in the daytime. Um, per, as far as personal best, the biggest uh, fish I've ever put a client on was not, uh, just a little over 90 pounds. Uh, my biggest fish is 95 pounds. And then uh, Jason Jackson and myself put a 105-pounder in the boat in a tournament in 2010. And one more question: What's what's your favorite body of water to guide on, or do you only guide on one uh, body of water? Man, I, I've I've gotten to see some really good ones, and the Mississippi River um, is awesome. I you know the Missouri River is one of my favorites during certain times of the year. You know they don't allow commercial fishing on the Missouri River. It's got some really large fish in it, and um, you know there are certain times of the year I wouldn't. I wouldn't want to be anywhere else than on that Missouri River, but uh, for most of the year, I'd have to say the Mississippi River. All right, I'll let you go back at it, Chuck. i got a couple more, but I'll get to them a little later. Okay, well, um, that's about it for me, Ryan. It's been great talking to you. Um, I'm going to pass you back on to Chris, and um, he's got some stuff for you. All right, yeah, a couple, I'll go ahead and get you the couple other questions we got from uh, the Catfish Weekly chat. Um, we got another question from Heath Malone. It asks, do you give a discounted rate for the people when they skunk, or does, how do you handle that when that happens? Uh, when that happens, I usually tell them the next time they come back it's half off. Half off, okay. All right, and then Adam Winder asks, uh, what's your favorite cut on Skipjack? Do you like the head, gut, chunk, chunk fillet, or how do you... What's your favorite way to do the bait? I don't I don't have a, a favorite necessarily. Um, you know, it seems like any given day they'll want a different cut, and I'll throw them all on there and see what they want. But, um, you know, if I had to uh, probably say what I've caught my biggest fish on, we'll probably be three-quarter cutting them and, um, you know, slicing the gut pocket open, letting it kind of hang, and uh, double hooking it. Okay. All right, yeah, that, I believe that's uh, all the questions we have for right now on the on the week, Catfish Weekly Chat. So, Paul, if you want to go ahead and shoot at him a little bit there. Okay. Oh, it looks like we got Lyle. <laughs> yeah, it looks like Lyle made it. Of course, I don't see him yet. But uh, Ryan, just out of curiosity, what what made you decide to get into guiding? Um, well, we. Just finished up my forget, and uh, I've been off for almost a year uh, making that video. And uh, I had a, a buddy of mine named Rick Bracken, and he uh, he called me and, and kind of approached me about starting a guide service. And, you know, at the time it seemed like a good idea because I didn't really want to go back to the real world. 
and um, I'd, I'd won some tournaments here locally, and you know things were going good, and, and uh, I'd, it was the time to do it. You know, it's, um, it, uh, and it and it worked out. You know, I, it, for the first two years of the guide service is the toughest, uh, the toughest years you're, you're going to have. And uh, I had, you know, two TV shows kind of fall into my lap, and it was just kind of meant to be. What, uh, you know, how long how long have you been doing it? Uh, this is my fifth year, I believe. Now, getting getting into guiding, and uh, what do what do you do uh, when you first be, before you you get to the boat ramp with your your uh, client? What what what's the things that you you normally do to get get that ready for the trip? Well, uh, you you know you've got to deal with your your um, your boat and your tackle as soon as you get you know when you get done from that trip you're taking care of stuff for the next day and then you you know I get up early um, I usually have my bait taken care of the night before um, you know squared away I, I get everything hooked up ready to go kind of a system stack make sure. Everything's where it's supposed to be, and then um, you know, show up at the boat ramp. Make sure you got your fish finder and all that good stuff that uh, we've all forgotten from time to time. But um, you know, just being prepared. You know, like like you're fishing a tournament or something. You know, it's you got a lot of prep work to do before you know the clients even show up that day. And uh, you you usually try to make sure the guy the the client uh, gets a learning experience as well, or um, yeah, I mean, I, you know, I, I like to, I like to teach, um, but you know, at the same time, you know, I'm, I'm also, everybody's different. You know, some people are really engaging and and they want to ask a lot of questions and and they want you to teach them. Um, and some people just want to sit back and relax and enjoy the the peace and quiet of the river and and just kind of sit there and you know and fish. So it, it just depends on what type of person it is. If it's somebody who has a lot of questions. I mean, I'm, I'll answer anything anybody asks me and, and, and teach them whatever they want to know as, as far as, you know, fish finder, you know, where to look for fish. You know, um, I've had people that um, just want to do an educational trip and, and they, they want to, you know, get their season started. So they'll come to me in, you know, March or February and they want to learn how to drift for later on that year. And, you know, we'll, we'll go out there and I'll show them the ins and outs of it, um, you know, and, and go through all that, and then you know, and then we'll go anchor fishing to catch fish. Well, you know, I want to go out on the river, and and I want to get a big fish. Now, the biggest on Mississippi is a 16 pound blue, but um, I get a hold of you. I want to spend my money. What what is the best time to to take people out? Is it winter, spring, fall? Um, you know, I, I get that question probably more than anything. What's the best time? And, and really, you know, besides the month of June, um, you know, any of them are good. I mean, you can catch them, you know, big fish in the winter. I'm not a big fan of winter fishing. I mean, you can catch some of the biggest fish in the winter, and they're schooled up, and you can have some phenomenal days. But for me, they just don't fight that hard. Um, it's cold. <laughs> and, um, it's not my favorite time of year, but if you like catching, you know, just putting big fish in the boat, it's it's a great time of year um, to do that. And you know, you can have some phenomenal days. They just they just don't fight that hard. And you're um, in your anchor fishing. I like to get out and drift. Um, I I do like anchor fishing time to time, especially when they're when they're hitting really hard. But um, you know, as far as the best time of the year, I mean, every year is different. If you look at the last two years, we've had really mild winters, and um, you know, March and April, we were already drifting, and, and the fishing was just on fire. This year, um, it was on fire February and March for a little while, and then it, it kind of shut down. And um, April had some really good days, but then the end of April and May, it's just been, I've never seen anything like it. It's really tough, and this is usually some of our best times to big fishes right now. And then, you, you know, you go into July and August, it's a lot of fish usually with some big ones thrown in and um, and then September, October, you know, we, we move around a little bit to some different areas, but um, we get on some phenomenal fishing then too and we've caught some of our biggest fish in October, November. So, um, you know, it's it's uh, 
any any time you're on the Mississippi River, you've got a chance to catch a hundred pound fish. You know, and then there's big fish out here to be caught any time of the year. That's but what I want. <laughs> usually, the second week of June. Um, you know, on a normal year, second week of June is when they typically go to spawn here, and um, you'll be you'll be catching um, you know beat up males all the way into early August, and um, so, but but usually. About the first or second week of July, typically, is when they when they start, you know, really feeding up after the spawn. Right. Well, that's that's about all I have for him. Appreciate you coming on, and and I'm gonna turn it back over to Chris. I know we got a contest and some other stuff, and Lyle just popped in here a little bit ago. So appreciate you showing up today. Oh, thanks for having me. Hey, uh, Ryan, we got one more question for you from uh, the Catfish Weekly chat, and we got Major Brown asking, what type of rigging and techniques do you like to use? Um, as far as the rigging goes, I mean, I've got some, some basic ones that I'll typically use. Um, I, you know, a, a three-way sliding rig, I, I like to use them a lot on my, on my bumping rods. You know, some people like to use um, a three-way with a Luxon chain, um, and I like that that rig as well, but uh, mostly I use, you know, a three-way with a sliding um, sinker line, you know, a sliding swivel that goes up and down your main line um, with about a, oh, anywhere from a 10 to 18-inch uh, line to your weight, and I, I use 40 pounds for that, and then I'll have about a two-foot liter of 80-pound mono um, to my double hook rigs, and I'll use that on anchor a lot, and then I'll also use, um, you know, the the stacker rig, that's the weight on the bottom, come up, and, and I vary how far I come up to the first hook. It might be 10 inches or it might be 18 inches, and then another hook above that, usually about two foot higher. And, um, you know, that's just kind of a, a, a just an overhand knot, a granny knot with a, with a twist in it that uh, seems to hold pretty good. Russ, you know, DeVore has one that uh, he uses that's, you know, hangs a little straighter, a little tougher to tie. But um, that not is I, I just like the fast overhand with the twist, and uh, it seems to hold just fine. And uh, as far as technique goes, like I don't know if he means by uh, any if drift in or anchored, or I'm not sure well, exactly I mean, I, what he means. I drift and and anchor. You know, it just depends on the water temperature, time of the year. Um, you know, I, I I really like you know with with clients, um, you're you're typically doing just you know the drifting. Um, and, and not as much walking baits unless, you know, they, they, they want to do that. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's not something that most people can just pick up and, and take off with in, in a short amount of time. You know, it takes a feel and it takes, you know, some practice. And I'm, I'll, anytime anybody wants to do that, I'll put it around their hand and, and we'll go. But um, we usually catch most of our fish by drifting. And then, of course, anchor fishing, um, you know, that's pretty self-explanatory. Yeah. We got one more question that came in. Uh, what what hook do you use, and do you bend them out any? Um, I use the double action um, Team Catfish ADOT, and I, I have I don't have to bend those out at all. They've got the offset. They seem to work really well. Uh, I've been hooked by them a couple times. They're really sharp. Uh, and I'll also use the, um, the Super J's and the 10s. And uh, that's just a dynamite hook. I mean, those things, <laughs> those things that go through the, the, you know, the roof, the head. They're they're pretty pretty wicked. And I use those for uh, walking baits. Do you use the double the double actions because a lot of clients probably like to set that hook, and that's more of a hook that you could maybe get away with that, or you you've got a lot more leniency with that hook if they did, you know, happen to set the hook or. Um, you know, if, if they didn't, you know, reel quite as much, they're sharp enough, and usually, you, you know, it's got a, enough give that you can get the hook to somewhat set, and then when they finally, you know, their hand will flip off the reel or something, or, or they'll goof it up, usually you'll still catch a few of those fish, because that hook is so sharp, and it is a little more forgiving. It's, it's a great hook, you know, it's, they're tough to get back out, um, I've been using them for, I think three years, and when I started using them, hook ratio went up tremendously. Do you always use a double hook rig, or do you sometimes just use a single hook? 
No, I use a lot of single hooks, but if we're, if the fish are wanting bigger baits and I, I can get away with throwing bigger baits, uh, you know, I'll, I'll use double double hook rigs. I always, um, you know, a lot of the guys that fish the tournaments and stuff, and uh, they they use a big bait with just a single hook, and I, I I give them a lot of credit. They must they must have a lot of patience and 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 um, a lot more luck than I have because I I almost every time we'll have a big fish just load the rod down and then all of a sudden it'll just fly up and you know they don't have that front that hook um i just found with that double hook rig i catch a lot more of this fish but a lot of people tell you it'll take away the action of the bait um it won't have as much action and and i think there's probably some truth to that but um you know i i have more luck with the double hook rig Okay. Well, we got Lyle here, and he showed up a little bit late, but we're going to go ahead and pass it over to him. Let him uh, spend your a little bit, yeah. see what he's got for you. Yeah, Lyle. Hey, Lyle. Hey, Ryan. hey, Ryan. How you doing tonight? Oh, pretty good. A little tired. I was out turkey hunting all day, chasing turkeys, and they got the best of me. I think I walked about twenty miles today. It seemed like. Cool. I feel like anyway. I got tied up this afternoon with an old friend of yours, and he just, uh, I couldn't get, uh, broke loose to get going. Uh, Jason and Vicky come up today. All right, on. Those are some good people right there. Is, if it was any better, nobody in the world couldn't stand it. It's good people. <laughs> um, you know, I've been on the boat with you, and John Nordyke and I had a trip with you a few years ago, and, and, um, uh, you know, a lot of guys don't understand, especially guys that fish all the time, understand what you go through doing uh, a guide trip or any guide as far as that goes. But I know that uh, that you do go out of your way to make sure everything is done. And, and I'm not sure what all topics that you went in. But, you know, I was firsthand got to see John wanted to learn drifting. And when him and I took that trip, we was, what it was it, uh, uh, March or something, real cold weather, and and you took the time to explain everything to him that he wanted to know, and still took us and put us on fish, and and um, a lot of these guys or or people that are watching the show um, need to understand that that you you do this all the time for anyone. Is that not correct? Yeah, I mean, any, anybody, you know, that they, they, they asked some of those questions earlier, and, and um, you know, anybody who wants to, to learn and, and ask the questions, um, you know, I, I, I'm, not a, I'm not a mind reader, you know, I don't know, uh, you know, what they're wanting to learn unless they tell me, you know, and, and I have a lot of guys, you know, just ask, feel free to ask any question you want to know, and um, I'm always happy to answer it, you know, I, a lot of times, I, you know, I'm not going to just say, well, this is where we drift at, or this is why we, you know, I, you know, I don't know that you want to know that, so ask me that. <laughs> and the guys who, you know, ask the most questions, I feel like they get, you know, the most out of the trip because I, I, I have, you know, I will tell anybody anything. Just ask the question. I mean, that's that's why I'm there. I'm not a, a tournament fisher any minute anymore. I'm I'm not um, I'm not here to you know, hide things from people. I, I, I want to, I want everybody to learn how to catch these things. And, and if you do come on my boat, I'm also going to tell you about uh, CPR and, and, and selective harvest. You know, in my boat, we, we release anything 10 pounds and up. So if it's 10 pounds, it goes back in the water. And, and, you know, I let everybody know it comes in the boat, why we do that. And uh, now the last thing I want to do is, is take out. Some, and, you know, if you catch a fish legally, that's your fish. But, you know, there's, <laughs> it takes a long time for those fish to get that big. We, you guys all know that. And the last thing I want to do is take somebody out there, show them how to catch a bunch of big fish and have to keep every single one of them. Um, you know, anymore, I, I stay busy enough that if, you know, guys are meat hunters, most of the time, um, you know, I, I don't take them. And, and I know that's crazy for a guy to say, but um, it's the way I, I run my business. I, I just, you know, I, those fish are, there's not an unlimited quantity of them out there, um, you know. So I, I, I'm not saying that if somebody, you know, little kid caught a 30 pounder or something like that, or a 40 and or a 50, <laughs> and and that was just one fish, and he wanted to keep it or whatever and take it home and show. I mean, that's fine. That's not what I'm talking about. You know, that's I'd prefer that they let him go, but I'm not a CPR Nazi either. I'm not. Uh, 
I'm not, you know, going to bad enough someone for keeping their biggest fish or something. I mean, that's going to happen. But there's guys that they know how to catch them. They go out there, they keep, you know, it's ridiculous how many fish you get in Mississippi right now. 20 fish per person in any size, that's ludicrous. I mean, yeah, uh, it's crazy. You know, I kept 20 fish over 20 pounds, and we've had those days many times out there. Um, you know, that's a lot of fish. <laughs> I don't think my freezer would handle that many fish. Well, you know, and, and you was involved with the conservation movement that we was working on here with Rick a couple years ago, and and uh, you know, I know that it's it's something that's near and dear to you as it is myself, and and uh, if we don't do get something done or keep staying after it, and uh, you know, then all those fish will be gone someday, and and the kids will never know what a 30, 40, 50, 60 pound fish is. Um, are you are you fishing any tournaments this year? Um, I don't think I'm going to. If I do, I might fish one at the end of the year in Arkansas. I might um, might go down there and I hear them on Matt and Gills have, have won it the last two years in a row. And I always like fishing against those guys. They're about as good as they come. I mean, just you know, great great competitors. And uh, you know, I always like to fish against them and all those guys down there. And I might I might go fish that one. Well, that'd be decided. I, I really just kind of gotten away from the tournaments. Now, I knew that you had. I didn't see you much anymore, and, and, and that's a shame as you're a great competitor to the sport. Um, is are, are you and Rick still involved in uh, the guide service together? Um, Rick, you know, Rick's got an open invitation anytime he wants to come back to guide. He, he, uh, I know he sold his boat, and he's really been, you know, hammered down with uh, with running the tow service and everything. Um, he kind of signed it all over to me, but I just kind of left it if he ever wanted to come back and, and, and do any guiding. You know, it's, it's there for him. So he, he's, he's a real good guy and a uh, real good, you know, business partner. He's about as good as they come. I, you know, I, I hope he does someday, but if he doesn't, you know, it's, I understand. <laughs> he makes a lot. You know, he makes pretty pretty honest and good living, uh, you know, driving those tow boats. So. Right, I you know, and I've known Rick a long time, and I knew when you guys got started, and and I didn't know if he if he was going to do a lot of guiding or whatever because he's gone so much. But uh, it's been a very very good time for you, and and uh, we're all glad that you're down there doing what you do and and uh, practicing the CPR and passing that knowledge on to these guys. Uh, I was in the boat with uh, Jason Jackson here. Well, I don't know, it was a month ago, and we seen you out on the river, and and you put a kid. Uh, well, he wasn't a kid. He was, you know, twenties probably, but uh, on the the greatest fish he'd ever seen, and and um, it's got to be pretty rewarding to put those guys on them big fish and and watch them turn them back loose and see the smiles and take all the pictures. It has to be as much a part as what you do as as uh, making money, isn't it? Yeah, I mean those days are you know those days are awesome. You know, you make a lot of good friends. Um, people you meet, you know, the people I went turkey hunting with uh, today, you know, I met them on the boat, and they just said, come on down, go turkey hunting if you want to, you know, and you just, you meet a lot of really cool people, and uh, and, and to watch people catch their biggest fish, that's definitely one of the perks of the job, it's not, you know, it's not all, uh, you know, great, but it's, that's one of the, the greatest things about it, you know, you get to watch, you know, kids, and families, you know, have a good time and people catch their biggest fish. It's it's a uh, it's definitely the best job I've ever had. Absolutely. Well Rick, our uh thanks for everything that you do and being on the show tonight. Um I got like I say, I kinda got tied up today and I'm a little late running in, but I know I'll be seeing you pretty soon down there in St. Louis. We're gonna make some trips down there and and uh, uh keep these kids on the straight and narrow as you're putting them on them great fish. Well, I appreciate it, Lyle, and I appreciate y'all having me on. Sorry, I was, I'm probably sounding like I'm half dead. I'm I'm pretty tired, but <laughs> I like coming on and talking catfishing, and and um, I just like to thank you know my sponsors because they're the ones who uh, help me do what I do, and um, you know they they uh, they're you know just key in everything you know I do, and and they're really good for the sport. Uh, Lawrence Fish Finders. Um, Tangling with Catfish Rods, Team Catfish Terminal Tackle, 
uh, K2 coolers. I know I'm going to leave somebody out here. A monster rod holder. Um, and I know, I know I'm leaving somebody out. <laughs> um, I think, I think I'm, I got everybody, but if I left somebody out, I'm sorry. Hey, Lyle. Yes. And just because you're late, it's not mine. It's not yours. It's <laughs> not mine. Go ahead, Chris. All right, Ryan. I'm gonna get. I've got a, quite a few questions for you here. Um, oh, okay. I got a. You were talking a little bit earlier with uh, Chuck about you know the stress and everything. You know how how much you know pressure is put on you to get um, clients on fish and things like that. Um, my question would would expand upon that a little bit. I know I would say that any any good guide really. You know, they probably really, really do stress and think about, you know, even beforehand, where am I going to take these people? What am I going to do with them? You know, and and especially if you don't, you get them on fish, that that really eats at you. Um, it, it, would you say that that kind of stress and that kind of pressure that you're dealing with on such a regular basis uh, really limits the amount of time you think you'll be able to do this job as as guiding, or do you think? You know, just fishing in itself, kind of. No matter how, no matter how much pressure, it still sort of is also a stress reliever as well. Um, no, I, and 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 just real quick, I whisper wear apparel, <laughs> and, uh, Kevin Park and uh, and uh, John Boat Mafia. I, I forgot, I forgot those guys. I knew I would. But as far as as far as the pressure goes, I mean, you just got to take it. It's fishing, you know, and. Uh, as long as, like I said, you, you do your best and try your hardest and keep fresh bait, keep, you know, moving and, you know, teaching and, and, and just having fun and everything, you know, you know, you can, you can get past a rough day. So, you know, as long as I know I'm prepared, I had fresh bait, um, you know, did everything in my power to try to, to catch the fish. I mean, it's, it's fishing, you know, that's what you got to tell yourself. And, uh, the, you know, Hopefully the the good days outnumber the bad, and uh, you know by a lot, uh, by a good margin, and you know, and so far they have. So you know, I don't see myself. I don't. I always tell people I don't think I'm smart enough to do anything else. So I think I'll I'll just stick with this. <laughs> All right. Um, next question I have for you is: uh, What equipment have you used that's failed you that you pretty much have? Decided that I, you know, no longer. I'm no longer using this this equipment. And um, what, what's proven? Yeah, stuff for you? Uh, there were some there were some hooks that I wasn't real happy with, and I, um, you know, I, I got rid of those. <laughs> and then um, I I was using some some Abu um, seven thousand rockets, and 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 they're good smooth casts and. Nice drag and everything, but I tore them up really, really fast. Um, I used some some line that I wasn't real happy with, you know, uh, just little stuff, you know, but make a big difference when you fish, you know, every day. Well, well, name some names for us. We need to know. Find out <laughs> why you pay more for a lot of this stuff because, you know, in the long run, it saves you money to pay a little more for quality than to keep spending money on Junk, you know, not junk, but but stuff that's just going to tear up and, and cost you more. So um, just 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 a few little things like that. But uh, you know, I'm I'm real happy. You know, I've kind of gotten a good groove with my equipment and everything. You know, operates well, and um, I I don't care what reel you have. Uh, you know, you use them every day, and you get people that aren't used to using you know the equipment we use. Um, it's going to get tore up. You know, everything is. I use Rich's Real Repair um, over there in Athens, and he does a good job. But I mean, I'm steady sending reels to him. And I don't, you know, but the Dakotas have been, you know, I'm not sponsored by them or anything, but they've they've been a great reel for me. I usually I get a few months before I tear one up, you know, out of them. So and that's those and some pens. Uh, you know, I use some pens and. And those seem to be, you know, pretty tough. But um, I didn't have much luck with the Abus, and I'm not saying I'm not an Abu person or they don't make good products or anything like that. I've just had bad luck with them. You 
know, I, we, we've kind of tore up. Now I've never tried the seven, you know, the, the IC3s, but I've had the synchros and the and the rockets, and that just didn't have much luck with them. The, on the pin that you used, did you use the Fathoms, or what, what pins did you like? The 320. G3. 320. And the Dakotas, you, you, see, yeah. you seem to like those. That, I mean, because really, I mean, whatever they're, a guide is they're using. They're a little bulky, but they're workhorses. Yeah. A, a guide is going to be able to tell you what's going to last. I mean, they're going to, most most guides are going to figure that stuff out, you know, if they're going to save themselves a little bit of money not replacing stuff all the time. They're going to they're gonna be able to help a lot of people, you know, know what, what's built to last, really. And, and, and as much as you fish, you know, even things that are built to last are going to need repair, but. <laughs> oh, you bet. Yeah, you're going to tear stuff up. I mean, it's just the way it is. So, you know, when you're out there, um, you know, as, as much as I am, it, you know, crazy stuff happens and stuff's going to fail on you and all that. And if you, uh, you know, if you, if you buy quality stuff, it's going to happen less. Yeah. Um, Braid or mono? And a question we got on uh, Catfish Weekly. I, I use Braid. I use the um, in Catfish Tug of War, and I also use Power Pro. Um, I've, I've been using Power Pro for years, um, you know, and like I said, Jeff's Je sponsor, and his, his Braid is great. Um, I've been using Power Pro for years, and it's just tough for me to switch because it works, you know, great too. Yeah, I, I like I've it. Had really good luck, luck with both, and I think I've got Power Pro on from one of some of my first years. I just, uh, you know, I'll, I'll take the the old end and I'll tie it onto a new reel and I'll, you know, so you got the new stuff on the bottom, on the top, and you know, I'll rotate it out like that. Yeah. Another question I have for you is, uh, is there any spots that you know that are just, they're what you'd almost consider a secret spot. You just won't take anybody, you know, any old client to, you know, they're for your family or friends or, or, or just for yourself or anything like that? <laughs> you know, I get that all the time, and I always, you know, anytime I have kids on the board, I'll, at the end of the day, I'll always, you know, joke with them, all right, it's time to go to the secret spot, and, <laughs> but no, I, I mean, any, the, the fish move around so much, um, you know, I just, all I'm out there doing is trying to establish a pattern, and, and keeping, keeping people on fish, and, you know, if, if we're catching small fish, and, if they're done doing that, and they want to go after a big one. You know, we'll we'll switch up tactics and, and go after a big one. You know, so it's as far as spots go. I've got spots where I prefer other people not see me out there. Um, but if somebody is taking time to, um, you know, to, to guide me out, I'm I'm gonna take them to where we're gonna catch, we're gonna catch what they're after. They're after. Yeah. yeah. Would Would you say would on? You say on I'm getting feedback from someone. Okay. Um, would you say that uh, when you're out on the water with your fish finder, I, you, I think you said you use Lowrance. Uh, can you tell the difference with your Lowrance between like a catfish and another fish on your fish finder? I always tell people, I mean, that there's no definite. I've, you know, I, I, I call it an educated guess on how they're relating to structure or the bottom or you know, the general shape and color. Um, yeah, I, I think there's, you know, you can be fairly accurate on, on what you you think is catfish and on the side scan, you know, I usually look for um, how many there are and how they're relating um, into the current or, you know, the structure of the bottom or, you know, so on. But, okay. you know, it's all educated guess as far as I'm concerned. I, I wouldn't, you know, unless I see them come up and bite my bait, Watch my pole go down and reel him up, and you say that there he is. But most of the time, I think you can go, yeah, that's you know, that's probably a catfish. I uh, you know, uh, go ahead and throw your your business name up and your phone number, and uh, boy, we can and put that in sure. in the video later on. But sure, uh, Ryan Casey with Show Me Catfishing Trophy Guide Service www.showmecatfishing.com and the number is 314-477-8355. And they can call you 2, 3, 4 o'clock in the morning. That's okay? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if they want to get a hold of me, the best, uh, <laughs> best time to do it is probably around 
in between uh, 6.30 and 9 o'clock, 9.30 at night. Usually the best time to reach me. Uh, if, if I don't answer, leave me a message, and I'll get back to you between those hours usually. Now I'm going to – I got more questions for you, but I'm going to take a second out here. And uh, we have a few bottles of Dead Red left that people didn't get back with us or we just didn't give out enough or whatever. We had a couple extra ones left. I asked just a little bit ago. Uh, anybody who hasn't won yet in chat, and we had two people that hadn't won, uh, Major Brown and Heath Malone. So congratulations to both of you guys. You're each going to get two bottles of Dead Red. Uh, just Heath Malone, I'll see you uh, probably at the next tournament, and I'll give them to you there. And then uh, um, Major Brown, if you just send me a, a message with your address on it, I'll get it shipped out to you. Um. Say hi to Major Brown too. I believe I've had him in yep. the with before. Yeah, he said that he's he's fished with you before. Got a forty-seven pound blue, which he loved, and he's got it on on the books for this year to go back out. So yep, yep, he's he's a good guy. All right, so back to the, some more questions I had for you. I said, uh, what what do you think uh, most tourney guys do wrong when they're out there? Uh, tournament guys. Yep. I mean. Tournament fishing, so much of it is is a mental aspect, that, um, you know, and and I'd say, you know, that's where you either go right or you go wrong. You know, anybody can go out there and, and find a, you know, a good school of fish and, and, you know, they'll bite and you win the tournament. But to be consistent, you know, you've got to have the right mental game. You know, you've got to, you know, be, um, you know, have some self-control pre-fishing, you know, and not hook every fish that you're, you're, you're fishing for and um, in the spots that you're wanting to fish during tournament day. You know, you need to clip baits on or, um, you know, just go through there and, and once and, and, and see what you got and, and that kind of thing and, and then maybe have, you know, self-control to go back and, and just look at it the next few days before the tournament. And then the biggest thing is, is your game plan. You know, come up with a game plan and, and then, you know, Stick to it, but if it if it's not working, change it up. I mean, treat it as a day of fishing. A lot of guys panic, you know, and they want to run here and there and everywhere they've caught fish before, instead of just doing what they do on a normal day, which is settle down and and figure out what the pattern is. Why aren't those fish where they were the day before? Is the water coming up? Is the water, you know, is is the water going down? the water's going down, those fish might have moved out further into the channel. If it's coming up, they might have moved closer to the bank. You know, they're probably not far, um, but even if you're marking them and they're not biting, you know, maybe it was a time of day thing. You know, maybe they didn't pay attention to, you know, I was catching these fish at 9 o'clock in the morning or, or 10 o'clock and not 6 o'clock when, you know, I'm out here fishing for them now. So, I mean, it's just a lot of variables. But most of the things I see people do wrong in a tournament is they panic. You know, you'll see them, and, and we all, you know, they're scrambling. you see them running up and down the river, you know, or, yeah. or the lake. You know, they're just jumping around, and they're not fishing. And you've got to have your, your lines in the water, base in the water to catch them. So, I'm, I'm guilty uh, of that. You know, so I, much I of it is just a mental game. I think that's where a lot of people fall short, and that's what, you know, is going to help you be consistent. Yeah, I, I fully, like I said, I've, I've done that. I'm guilty of it. I, I agree with that as well. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Who, who taught you how to fit catfish, and do you have any role models in the catfishing world? Oh, yeah, I got, you know, um, Bill King, um, you know, Coughlin, uh, you know, Kearns. You know, I've got uh, Patterson, uh, you know, a ton of the the guys who, you know, got everybody, you know, it got me interested in the sport. Um, you know, the guys have been doing it for years, and uh, and you know, part of the reason why I'm doing it now. So I mean, yeah, I've got role models for sure. And um, what was the other part of that question? Uh, who taught you how to how to catfish? Um, you know, I, I was I I just kind of got out there and did it and I've had people I've went with you know so many people I went with and I mean anybody I go with I, I usually will pick something up from them because I pay attention um you know I've I've fished with a lot of good catfishmen so I mean 
I, I've learned things. I've learned things from Russ DeVore. Um, you know, I've fished with. I've had you know good fortune to fish with Russ quite a few times. Um, I learn stuff from my clients. You know, they'll pass me on tips that that helps them out. You know, I mean, I'm always learning, <laughs> and I still got a long way to go. You know, I've got a lot to learn. I, I got to fish with Chris Stout. You know, I learned a good deal from him, and um, just. You know, I've gotten to fish with quite a few people, and I've, I think I've I've learned a lot from all of them, and um, I've picked up a few bad habits along the way on my own. <laughs> yeah. Um, just recently here on Facebook, I don't know if you if you've seen this or not, but uh, I believe the Mason Gales shared shared the status of somebody, and I I believe they were on Wheeler Lake, and I'm not sure who it was exactly, but uh. Um, a couple guys were in their boat traveling about 50 miles an hour and apparently hit a um, log that was hidden behind a the wake. They pretty much had no no control over over avoiding it, and that motor came up into the boat when they hit that, and it ended up chopping the guy's leg up pretty good and you know doing a, a good laceration on a head and whatnot. But you know the guys were lucky to be alive or whatever. Um, <coughs> What what would be your you know what would have happened to you the most dangerous thing that's happened to you out there and you know what kind of lessons do you think people should take away from these things? Um, I'm you know I'm overly cautious and that's one thing I think a lot of people take me as being kind of uh, uh, uh you know a little hard on them in the boat but it's you know safety is. <laughs> You know, because um, my whole business can go away in a blink of an eye, you know, because somebody makes a mistake or I make a mistake out there. And um, and somebody can get hurt, you know, and that's my worst fear. So the the most dangerous thing out there that, that's happened to me is, um, you know, the tug, the tug drivers. Some of them, you know, feel like they own the river, and some of them are really nice. But uh, I've had some run-ins with some, some guys who I was on their river and, they didn't like it, and they uh they charged the back of the boat just fully full on, just came right at us, you know, and uh, threw a bunch of like a huge wake right over the back of the boat and uh, on purpose, and you know it's it's pretty scary. You know? Was that was that a uh, tugboat driver or what was that? You know, know know your rights, but also know the rules of the road. You know, if if you're within a hundred foot of their tow and um. If you're, you know, if you're out there on the river, it's, it's a good idea to have VHF and know the channels that they're all on. Okay, so you, the the got the boat that came up and did that to you was it a, a regular boat or was that a tugboat? No, it was a tug. Oh. <laughs> it was a tug with the Osage fleet, which is no longer around anymore. Yeah. I, yeah. It, their, their boats are still out there. But the Tell you what, them houseboats boats can throw up a hell of a wake, too. I had my experience with that, and I don't think I want it again. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's they're bigger than you, and sometimes they feel like they're going to just push you around, and, you know, it uh, it's kind of nature of being out there, but just, you know, just kind of give them a wide berth and avoid them and, and you know, uh, know your... You know, know, know what your rights are, and, and um, you know, now I'll get on the radio and holler at them to, uh, you know, to back off. And uh, there's forms you can file with the Coast Guard against them. Now, nothing's probably going to happen, but they don't, uh, you know, they don't like to, to have that, you know. Paperwork? They, they know, you know what you're talking about. Yeah. Okay. All right, well, that's... Uh... Yeah, that was a, a pretty scary thing that I seen, and and earlier in, in one of our first episodes, you know, we we uh, we talked a little bit about the the slipping off of the front throwing, you know, guy that fell in throwing the cast net early in the year and frigid water, and there's there's lots of lessons, and and you know, Ryan said he's he's pretty much uh, you know a stickler on the rules of being safe out there on the water, which is a good thing, and that's gonna you know as long as uh he continues that, I'd say that, you know, he's going to have a long career doing it and everything. And, the um, first thing you, you do when you go to get in my boat is you go over to safety meeting in the morning. And that's where everything's at. The fire extinguisher, the throwable, how to start the boat, run the boat, uh, you know, the first aid kit. And then 
you know, my rules. And, I think and, uh, I think if anybody doesn't respect the water, they ought to stick to bank fishing, pretty much. Yeah. That, that stuff will come up and kill you real quick. Yeah. Yeah. As a matter of fact, wasn't it last year they had that guy, Dennis, or something like that, fell off the... Fell out Dennis, of yeah, Dennis. Dennis yeah. was killed out there, and um, I, I still don't know if they know exactly what happened, but I think there was an incident with a with a tug and a barge, and um, yeah, he was out there at night, and that was a that was a really bad deal. You know, we lost a, a really good, you know, he was a, a good cat fisherman. He was out there quite a bit, and you know, it's a left behind a, a family, and it's it's a bad deal. You know, it's it, you got to respect the water out there, and, and things can happen in a blink of an eye. So. You know, he's he was a good fisherman. He knew what he was doing out there, and um, you know, I'm I'm curious to know what exactly happened when they finish up the investigation. All right. Well, we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and give everybody a few minutes to close out, give a, a closing statement to close out the show. So I'm gonna start it off with uh, Chuck. Uh, I think you're muted or something there, Chuck. We can't hear you. Uh, there you go. May 17th, um, Alabama Catfish Trail. We're going to be launching at the um, Scottsboro um, City Park. And we're going to be launching at 7 a.m. Um, Scottsboro is going to be having a catfish festival that day. We're going to have weigh in at their. Uh, festival. It's going to be a fun time. We want everybody to come out and enjoy it. Um, if you can't catfish, come enjoy the festivities. And they're going to have a kids' rodeo that day, so everybody's welcome. That's all I got. All right, go ahead, there, Law. All right, I'm going to go through the same stuff we go through every week. Twisted Cat Outdoors is having. Uh, Nauvoo, Illinois tournament, uh, the 24th of May. I'd like to see everybody show up that could possibly make it. Um, fishing will be above the Kia Cup Dam. It'll be a, basically a channel cat tournament. We're looking to have a, forward to having a good crowd up there, so I hope everybody can make it. Um, May 31st, Calvin Myers Benefit Tournament at Burlington, Iowa. Uh, a lot of you guys know Calvin and and uh, I'm hoping that we have a great crowd. We have just tons and tons of prizes and giveaways for this tournament, and uh, I hope that, that everybody can show up for that. It would be a really good time. Um, May, uh, our, um, the Jack and Jill tournament will be June 14th uh, at LaGrange, Missouri, sponsored by uh, Mark Twain Casino. This is a one man, one woman minimum in the boat. You can have as many as three people, but you have to have at least one man, one woman in the boat. Uh, we've got a lot of response and a lot of entries coming in for this tournament. We're guaranteeing 3,000 to win. I'd uh, like to see everybody that can possibly make that uh, make it. It's going to be a really good time. We've got uh, lots of giveaways, and there's going to be booths set up and some other stuff. Um, the other tournament that I wanted to talk to everybody about was um, Keokuk, Iowa. It's going to be, I believe it's July 10th, uh, 12th, July 12th. We are accepting entries for that, um, $100 entry fee. There is also an added money tournament. This is going to be a great tournament. Last year I think we had 45 or 48 boats in this tournament, and it should be bigger this year. The water looks pretty good, so uh, I think it'll be really a good time. So please be uh, remember about the uh, Calvin Meyer tournament. This the, it's going to be meals and and drawings and giveaways and auctions and raffles and all kinds of stuff. And and this is for a really good cause. So anybody can make it to Burlington uh, uh, May 31st. We'd love to see you up there. That's uh, all I got. All right, go ahead, there, Paul. Yep, I'd like to. Thank Ryan for answering our questions and with us today. And and uh, one of these days I will get my fishing trip one way or the other. And uh, it, it's going to happen. It's just a matter of time. But uh, I do appreciate you being with us tonight. And uh, I'll roll it back over to Chris for his closing. 
Uh, we're going to, uh, I know that you already did the, did a little bit there, Ryan, but I'm going to let you go ahead and go again and, and let us know uh, any of your sponsors or anything that you might have that you want to throw in here. Yeah, I appreciate that, uh, Chris. And uh, I, I thought we were done earlier when I was doing this. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, with, without the sponsors, it's, you know, they, they make everything happen and uh, make my life and job a lot easier. And they're, uh, you know, they're the ones that are pioneering and, and pushing the sport forward. So I'd like to thank uh, Team Catfish uh, Tackle, Tangle Catfish Rods, uh, Monster Rod Holders, uh, Whisperwear Apparel, Lorance. Uh, K2 Coolers, uh, Jumbo Mafia, um, Kim Parks, and um, I think that's I think that's everybody. If I forgot somebody, I apologize. But uh, I guess yeah, you could just shoot me a, a PM earlier with those so I can get them on the video. Okay. Uh, go ahead, Chris. And I definitely uh, appreciate y'all having me on here. It's a, it's a good thing you're doing to uh, promote the sport and, and uh, keep it going. So. Thanks for having me on. Now we thank you for for coming on, man. But uh, for me closing now, um, I do want to say for the, for the guys who were injured in that boat that I was talking about, we we all at Catfish Weekly hope you guys have a speedy recovery. Uh, we hope you know everything turns out good and all that, and and you know nothing like that happens to anybody else. So um, uh, also we have uh, want to mention that we do have some available spots as far as advertising uh, on the website. Uh, you can see if you go to catfishweekly.com you'll see some spots where we have um, places for ads. We're, we're, uh, we're only asking I believe it's uh, $50 for six months and $30 for three months um, for those ads and then also uh, for like giveaways and things we just had Team Catfish given, given away this last month uh, Dead Red so if you if your uh, company or business would like to give uh, something away, even you know, be it a discount or something like that for a uh, future month or whatever, you can get a hold of us at one of the uh, at catfishweekly.com email addresses, be it Fud or Paul, and we can get you set up there. Um, I do want to also thank my individual sponsors since I don't think I've done that yet on this show. Uh, Mincota, Humminbird. Um, Lyle there with Black Horse Custom Rods. Um, let's see, Driftmaster, Bottom Dwellers, Delaware Propeller, Midwest Trophy Mounts. He, he started. I gotta look. I gotta look down. Just, just to put this in perspective, Ryan, he had to look at his shirt to get them off. <laughs> hey, I, I, don't, I, I don't know why I'm, I'm, uh, well, I'm tired, but I'm having a tough time thinking on my feet here. Yeah. <laughs> I think I got most of them, but if I forgot one, I do apologize. But yeah, I, I want to thank, like he, like Ryan said, you know, we can't do this without our sponsor. Sponsors are going to help us push the sport forward. So I do want to thank all of them uh, and any future sponsors that we'll have for Catfish Weekly, as well as the past ones that have helped us already get going. Uh, we really do appreciate it. Um, I believe that's all I have. So again, I want to say thanks to Ryan Casey for coming on tonight. Uh, Thanks for Lyle for blessing us with his presence. Let's <laughs> <laughs> uh, go ahead and let Ryan go, and then we'll. There's a couple of other things we needed to do, but uh, we don't need to get him tied up any longer uh, while we're on right. on the air. I appreciate it, Ryan. Thanks. Hey, but, uh, thanks for having me, guys. All right. All right. Bye. Um, we needed to. Well, we're still, uh, and I just had it on the tip of my tongue. Um, it's one of the announcements that you make at the end. Oh, okay, yeah. About to do that. We're, we're not biased, and yeah, you want me to do that one? Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, and then are we done after that? Yeah, I think so. Okay. All right. The last thing I, I guess I, I forgot to do it. I didn't mention it, but you know, even though the, in each of us individually have our own sponsors. Um, the show itself isn't uh, biased or sponsored by any specific product or company or anything. We're pretty much just here to uh, pass along our, our enjoyment of the sport of catfishing and spread knowledge and information and, and just have a good time. And, and so, you know, it doesn't matter what product you use or what company or whatever. There's no, there's no uh, politics here. So We're in it together. Yeah, we're all in it together. We're just 
We're just here to have a good time. And, and, and you know, Chris, they're, you know, uh, the project that you and Lyle and, and a bunch are working on. Yeah, the, the Kickstarter project, uh, that came to a close. We were completely funded and overfunded, actually. So um, right now the, the current progress of that is that I bought the software. The forum is actually up and running right now. Um, it's not quite ready for everybody to jump in and start using yet. I, I'm looking for a designer to help get some add-ons and some things that I, I feel like it needs before it's completely ready. Uh, but as soon as it's all ready, we'll be uh, blasting it out on Catfish Weekly here and out on Facebook. Uh, all the guys like Aaron Wheatley and Lyle and everybody will be, uh, will be pushing that out and letting everybody know to go sign up and start sharing that information that we can get the catfish regulations and things for all the states. So keep an eye out for it and ear out for it, and it will definitely be uh, uh, ready hopefully within the next 30 days. So, I mean, I I'm working on it quite a bit. So... Um, I believe that's all, so until we see you next time, stay out of my spot.